Hey, Kirsten. Hey, Erin. What's Hi, up? Kira. <laughs> Thanks for being here with me today. Happy um, Venus Day. Happy Venus Day. So yeah, everyone, we're recording um, on Friday, February 26th. It's 9.15 a.m. Pacific time. Um, I think that means it's 5.15 p.m. Um, what is it? Greenwich Mean Time? <laughs> yeah what would you call what, what is your time zone called like, yeah I think you're right I think it, right, it's it's yeah. just like English it's not time. summertime yeah so yeah yeah Greenwich, 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 oh Greenwich. Kirsten's in 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 London or are you in London yeah I am. okay um and we'll we'll get to that but yeah welcome to episode six everyone um we're going to talk about the six and 12th houses to round out our houses series today. Um, really excited to have Kirsten and ET, aka Aaron. I probably switch back and forth. <laughs> that's okay. That's two. a good way to do it. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm excited to have you guys with me today. I wanted both of you on because you both have been doing work um, around the cadent houses. And you both have six house, twelfth house placement. So I figured it would be it would be a good um, combo to have on the show. Um, but to start, let's let's run through. Let's do some intros. Um, if you're comfortable with sharing your SMR, and then talk a little bit about your practice. Um, Aaron, let's start with you. Oh, thanks, Kira. Thanks for having me here. I'm really excited to speak with you and with Kirsten. Um, it feels like such a treat on Venus Day, the morning of Venus Day. <laughs> um, I'm Erin, also known as ET or ET Shipley on uh, Instagram and Twitter, and I am a professional consulting astrologer. Uh, and I also work uh, as an, I guess you could call me an activist. Um, I define that by saying, I look at the harmful realities of the world and I set about to change them in the way that I can, uh, which is usually small scale. Um, and I'm okay with that today. So um, yeah, I'm a professional consulting astrologer. I'm rooted primarily in like traditional Hellenistic techniques, uh, which I know is similar to Kira's practice. Kirsten, I'm not as familiar with your practice, so I'm excited to get to know. Uh, I am a Pisces sun, Sagittarius moon, and I have a Capricorn rising uh, with Saturn and Aquarius. And um, yeah, what else? Uh, I actively practice anti-capitalist um, business praxis, and I am, yeah, intrigued by all things involving dismantling systems of oppression. Uh, so I'm really excited to talk about the sixth and the 12th house today. Uh, and most recently I launched a research project um, back in December on the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction. And that project is exploring uh, cadent houses and um, spaces that are sort of on the separating side of the angle, uh, which we can talk about later um, as like, areas of the chart where we can find like counsel um, or guidance, especially in moments of like significant upheaval. Uh, so I'm sure that that will come into our conversation at some point. Uh, I'll turn it over to uh, Kirsten or Kira. Kirsten yeah. or Kira, sorry. <laughs> yeah, Kirsten. Thank you, Erin. Um, SMR and tell us a little bit about your practice. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I'm really excited to be here uh, and to chat about these houses. Um, yeah, so I'm a Cancer Sun, Pisces Moon, Libra Rising. Um, <laughs> I yeah, I'm I'm an astrologer. I'm a tarot reader. Um, kind of aside from my boring day job, um, and yeah, I think um, the sixth and the twelfth houses are just places that I kind of since. Uh, learning about astrology and kind of uh, learning I also practice in kind of the traditional Hellenistic um, kind of lineage and yeah I think I was always just intrigued uh, probably because I have my moon in the same house as well um, just by what it meant um, what that axis was really speaking to 
and and yeah thinking about it in ways that kind of went a little bit beyond uh the sort of traditional significations of those houses um and yeah i'm just really excited to to talk about it um kind of in line with what erin said um yeah i i also um do kind of local community organizing and very much kind of practice um in sort of anti-capitalist um and ways that I really think, um, yeah, astrology and these practices in general, I really see as kind of tools um, to dismantle those systems of oppression and to kind of really think about uh, what it means to exist like in relationship in the world um, and to kind of be present and, and really, um, yeah, use them to kind of think about how we disrupt certain systems and uh, and I think the six and twelve houses are, are really exciting places to talk about that. So, um, yeah. Um, are you taking clients right now, Kirsten? I am. Yeah. Um, I yeah, I do. Cool. And Erin, you are as well, right? I am. I think I have some. I'm moving in the next like few weeks really? for the third time in the last oh year. God. <laughs> but um, on your IC. <laughs> Yeah, so I I am taking clients and uh, I'm actually raising my rates. Um, Hell yeah, something that you inspired uh, at the end of this month. So um, I think by the time this comes out, uh, I will fully be back on track taking clients and then research consultations. The first round closed on February 21st, and there will be a second round that will open up likely in the summer fall of this year. Cool, awesome. We'll talk more about the research as well when we get into it. Um, and so like how we all know each other is really interesting. Um, Kirsten and I, we've done a reading before. I think that's the first time, but I feel like I probably knew you from Twitter or something beforehand. Um, and then I saw you speak. Actually, I didn't see you speak. I still regret not catching your... <laughs> Not catching your talk at QAC, the Queer Astrology Conference, because I really wanted to. That was a weird week weekend for me. Um, <laughs> I think it was me like an too. eclipse weekend. And yeah, um, I couldn't catch everything. But I was mm. so intrigued by your um, by the title of your talk um, and the description. What was it again? Yeah, so it was about the six and twelve houses. As um, So the name of the talk was um, kind of that as places of um, active resistance and um, that is still kind of how I think about them maybe I wouldn't quite phrase it that way but um, but yeah cool yeah I can talk about that as well yeah that's um that has like stuck with me enough to to where I was like I need to have you yeah. on the podcast to talk about this um, and and so yeah we've we kind of known each other through Twitter and online not in person yet but hopefully, I think I might be coming to London next year or yeah, next year, cool. taking a little Euro trip. So that would be cool. Yeah. Um, and Aaron and I met on a lovely we little app called right. Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> we both swiped right. I reached yeah. out first, oh, which is like I remember rare for that. Me. I was like, who is this B? <laughs> Aaron had um, your, your like first picture was at this restaurant in San Francisco, which I had just done a photo shoot at for work. I was like shooting for eBay fashion. And um, I had this like, just the most wild, like it was, the, it was the most wild project of my life in like the worst ways. I had to like oh. produce this shoot like a day or two before leaving for San Francisco, whatever. So I had, but this restaurant was like amazing and they have really good food and <laughs> it just stuck with me and I remember like what it looks like and I was like oh my gosh like you're first of all it was your profile said you're a photographer and an astrologer and I was like same and then <laughs> and then you were in front of that restaurant so I had something to message you about and we just like immediately clicked and like became best friends <laughs> yeah you were my first like I mean, I certainly had like astrologer friends. Like I was, um, and I was pretty close with Taylor Gates at the time, but we didn't like, we talked tarot more than astrology. Mm -hmm. And so I remember when I met you, we were like texting nonstop, Constantly. like planet science houses. And yeah. there was just like something about our friendship that like 
rapidly accelerated my own astrological education. And from like the time that we met to I think like two months later or a month later when I moved to California from Brooklyn, like I went from not being able to follow you to like fully building charts in my head at like really rapid speeds. And I just always think of you as like one, essentially one of my teachers um, in some ways, but like, I can't, I remember sitting, um, what was that bar that you loved? You're sincerely on Wilson You're Avenue sincerely. in Bushwick. <laughs> if it's, I think it's still open. If anyone is listening, go to your sincerely. Tell Chase, <laughs> cutie with the blonde hair, that I said hi. <laughs> yeah, we would just sit in there till like what that. two o'clock in the morning talking yeah. astrology and then walk home. Um, yeah, oh man, we had a really. Life. It was really, yeah, back in the day in 2018, and actually, you know, that was. It, so Aaron, we, we met, we started talking and then like three weeks later, Aaron's like, I think I want to move to San Francisco or I think I want to move to the Bay Area. And I was like, okay. Um, and so, and you it was were like- You also planning on moving to California. I was you planning on done. moving at that point. I didn't at, the, I didn't at that point, but um, you moved the day that Uranus ingressed um, I remember. Taurus. <laughs> and I was like, I'm going like, to die. I do this? There's going to be an earthquake. <laughs> Like I'm gonna land and my house is gonna be destroyed right away. I that mean, you've kind of you have had a very Uranian experience yeah, since moving. I have. I have. Um, but I remember um, because of that, it forced me to to um, start the first or to organize the first New York City astrologers dinner meetups oh that I was I running for like about two years. Um, yeah, up until the beginning of the pandemic, basically before you I left New York organized one when you came to visit the bay yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so you organized a dinner here <laughs> yeah because of Aaron was leaving I was like you know let's get together with other astrologers and like hang out and we went to Buna Cafe if anyone is in Brooklyn again <laughs> go <laughs> um go to Buna Cafe it's an Ethiopian restaurant it's incredible it's in Bushwick on Knickerbocker, um, give them your business. They're amazing. Um, and, (laughs) and yeah, so, um, we did that and then I just kept it going after Aaron left. Um, yeah. And we've since just been very close and yeah, Mm -hmm. when I came to visit last year, um, came to visit the Bay also organized a Bay area, New York or New York, a Bay area astrologers dinner. And we still had Ethiopian food and we had Ethiopian. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Also in also an Ethiopian restaurant. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, you're a big part of me building community with mm-hmm. astrologers, and maybe that's your cap rising falling in my eleventh. Um, I don't know, but yeah, maybe. And also Norwalk. Like, and we also Norwalk. Together at Norwalk with yeah, Sabrina we lived together. We slept together. <laughs> the same bed. We I didn't mean. actually sleep together. I mean, we actually slept as in like we snores. like we the snored together. Day. Yeah. Um, yeah. We have I can't wait till we can reconnect again. Um, and you and Kirsten don't know each other. This is your first we time. We don't know each other. I'm excited so to get wild to, to me because I feel like, yeah, I feel like you guys like we're very compatible yeah <laughs> and also ideas I mean yeah, yeah. and uh, exactly overlapping ideas um w- three of us represent Pisces sun moon rising yeah. um Aaron's Pisces sun Kirsten's Pisces moon I'm Pisces rising and Kirsten's moon is like exactly on my ascendant too so we have some nice watery vibes going on um <laughs> all three of us are also water suns Venus um, is in Pisces today, and it's yeah. Venus today. is in Pisces. I'm a Scorpio. <laughs> Harrison's a Cancer. Um, Aaron's a Pisces. So, this is going to be a very uh, like watery, mm-hmm. wet, juicy conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into it. Yeah. Um. So the six and twelfth houses, this axis, um, often often referred to as dark houses or bad houses. Um, and there's reasoning behind that, right? This isn't where we find, you know, sex, love, and romance, right? This is <laughs> we find some some more difficult, challenging um 
topics here. And I would kind of want to talk about like the, the access in general, like kind of themes that we find throughout in both houses. Um, but to start, I just wanted to note that these two houses, the 6th and the 12th, are where the malefics rejoice. Okay, so let's just put that out there. This is where malefics rejoice. <laughs> um, and in the sixth house, we have Mars um, rejoicing. And then in the 12th, we have Saturn rejoicing. So there's that. Um, and I always say this is like an axis of service and also health. Um, we find, you know, more physical maladies. Is maladies a word? It's yeah, absolutely a word. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank it's you. Like illnesses. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to make sure I wasn't <laughs> saying it wrong or saying the wrong word because I do that. Um, I had this whole experience once that I realized newsy wasn't a word. I was, it's nosy. <laughs> <laughs> In my whole life, my mom, because my mom says newsy and I thought it was, it's like, you're being newsy. Apparently it's not a thing. Yeah. Um, so I had to check sometimes. I um, think um, Mercury and detriment is really good at making up words that should exist should exist right yeah newsy should exist yeah thank you i appreciate that <laughs> um anyway <laughs> the six houses where we find maladies of the body the physical form whereas the 12th house is where we'll find them of the mind and <clears throat> excuse me of the spirit um yeah and i guess I'll, one other thing i wanted to say was they're, they're called dark houses because they don't make aspects to the ascendant, traditional aspects, the five Ptolemaic conjunction, sextile, square, trine, opposition. Um, those don't happen between the sixth and the twelfth in the first house. So that's why they're called dark. There's no, um, there's no direct eye line or sight from the ascendant, which we know um, represents life, the life of the, of the querent, the person we're talking about. How about you? Do you guys have any other thoughts about this axis, Erin? Yeah. Um, I always like to start when I'm talking about the houses, I like to start from where it like what it physically represents um, when you're looking at a chart. And so if a chart is the map of, of a sky of the sky, um, and we're looking at like the apparent motion of the sky around the earth, which is called diurnal motion. Um, there, the horizontal line that splits the chart in half is the, is the horizon line. So anything above the horizon line is what was up in the sky at the time of, um, uh, if it's a natal chart, like the native's birth, if it's an event at the time of the event, um, and anything that was below that line is below the horizon. Uh, and when you're looking at a chart, uh, diurnal motion moves clockwise. So when I'm looking at the sixth and the twelfth house, I'm looking at, um, according to diurnal motion, places in the chart that have just left one world and entered another, um, because they've just left the topside world and then entered the underworld if they're in the six, um, and just left the underworld and entered the topside world uh, if they're in the twelfth. And so when I'm looking at the sixth and twelfth houses, I mean, all of the cadent houses, the third, sixth, ninth, and twelfth are houses of um, travel because they are declining away from the angles. They're like moving away from. But when we're looking at specifically the sixth and the twelfth house, we're often talking about like banishment, exile, foreign lands. And I think part of the reason that we're talking about foreign lands or being othered is that when you have planets or points or um, particular spaces in those houses, that's a space that is like new to where it is and it comes from somewhere else uh, because it's coming from a different world, so to speak. Uh, I hope that makes sense to everyone who's listening. It's kind of a visual thing. It makes a lot of sense to me. I, I really love that visual. Um, <clears throat> I think anyone who's listening, if you just look at your chart or look at a chart, you should be able to sort of understand what what Aaron's saying about you know leaving one world and entering another um in this axis yeah I love that thank you it's disorienting too I think that's worth noting mm -hmm. and I think that's part of why the sixth and the twelfth get so many like health significations um bad fortune and bad spirits significations it's like 
it's disorienting to be in a place that isn't a place that you come from. And so there's a lot of navigating that has to happen in whatever new Mm -hmm. world, so to speak. Mm -hmm. How about you, Kirsten? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think that's very much how I think of them as well, like as houses and of course the third and ninth as well but yeah these houses are kind of falling away from the angles of the chart and um and if we think about that we kind of think about the angles of the chart as these kind of more fixed points that kind of you know prop up the chart or hold it in place almost and yeah it's kind of about this motion this like in between space this kind of liminal space and just to kind of tie into the like visual side of it um actually yesterday evening there was like this really gorgeous sunset and I was like I'm gonna go for a walk and and because I knew I was doing this I um I pulled up the chart for the moment and yeah I mean sunset is basically the sort of the sun was in the seventh house at the time um and if we think about that kind of again the sort of in between space but it's I think of the sixth and the twelfth houses as these moments just after that um where it's kind of like the half life right there's kind of um it's twilight time it's dawn it's kind of like that uncertainty and that kind of newness and the unfamiliarity of of a new space like you don't quite recognize the landscape you're in because it's changed so much because the quality of the light has changed so much and as I was walking I was kind of thinking about that because I was like it just looks so different (laughs) under you know as as the sun is going down and as the light has kind of really shifted and everything is sort of like merging and and takes on really different um, quality. So yeah, I definitely really agree with that. And I think that's why we kind of associate the sixth and the twelfth as well. I mean, it it relates to that um, question of visibility and kind of the, that line of direct visibility with the ascendant, but, um, but yeah, I think there's something about um, that's, part of the reason why I think they're associated with kind of things like decrease and um, I think about like integration and I think about kind of like absorption and kind of we're still trying to adapt and still trying to familiarize ourselves uh, with a kind of yeah something that's like shifted around us and Mm -hmm. yeah I think um, the symbolism of that definitely is like really important to how I, I think about them as well. Sure. That was beautiful. <laughs> I love that. Like, yeah, again, that um, that visual of like watching the sunset and literally watching the sun like enter a new a new phase, a new world. Um, no longer the the sect light. No longer, mm-hmm. you know, the leader of the the moment. And also at sunset the planetary hour shifts as well, right? Like Mm -hmm. a new planet Mm -hmm. takes over um, the planetary hour and therefore like the planet that's, you know, ruling the night. So last night was Thursday night um, and that would have been the moon, right? Um, Which is, it's kind of lovely now that I think about it, like Thursday nights um, at sunset, the moon takes over both as, you know, the sect light and then of, then it becomes Luna's night as well. Oh, mm-hmm. I want to like, I want to remember that for next Thursday. <laughs> yeah, it was great as well work. because tonight or tonight or tomorrow, depending on where you, you are, it's the full moon as well. So it was like the moon was already like. Oh yes, yeah. Oh. It was so magical. Yeah. So. Oh, beautiful. I need to go out and look <laughs> at it tonight. Um. Anyway, yeah, when the 6th and 12th, I'm glad that you mentioned, like, well, both of you mentioned that sort of need to adapt, that, like, adaptability piece, and also the associations with travel. Um, the ancients referred to cadent houses as met- metacosmios in between worlds. Um, and, yeah, that's really that's really how I think of them. Um I think it was also, yeah, Austin Kopic had spoke about them as being these places where, you know, planets there have to expend a lot of energy because they're literally like falling away. You can think even the, um, like, I think the best way to picture this is the sixth house and where it is in the chart. And, you know, after the sun sets 
it's literally like falling down underneath the earth. Like it's, it's in this place of decline. And with all the cadent houses, you can think of that, that, you know, they come after, they don't come after the cadent house, I mean, the angular houses, but if you're looking at the chart, um, yeah, like they, they are falling away from, from angular houses. Um, and, and therefore planets there tend to, I like to think of it as they're treading water. Like they, they kind of have to be working a lot in order to just maintain, um, and therefore they can be, yeah, there's this disorientation. They can be tired, those planets, you know, they, they wear out a lot quicker because they, they have to, they're like constantly working. It's like, they're always at work planets and in cadent houses, um, which, you know, we'll talk more about, <laughs> especially with the six and the 12. Um, yeah, let's, can we talk about, um, the, Saturn and Mars rejoicing in the uh, in the seventh, 12th and the 6th, <laughs> respectively. <laughs> yeah, you mean like generally or um, specifically? Just I think where each? some of those significations um, come through specifically for each. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, definitely. Let's let's get into the sixth house. Let's let's talk about it. <laughs> um, so some some traditional significations of the sixth house. The first two that always come to mind for me is illness and injury, um, specifically because Mars rejoices here, right? Um, and Mars is a planet, is a malefic that um, will tend to, you know, it's it's a god of war, okay? I don't really have to explain that too much, right? It's a god of war. What, what happens in war? Um, pain, <laughs> <laughs> injury, right? Um, and... And yeah, this is, those are like the main traditional significations of the six. Also, we find servitude, um, things like enslavement would fall here. And, you know, thinking back, not that there isn't modern day slavery because there sure as hell is, um, but thinking back to, you know, ancient times um, and how there was very much, I mean, again, Slaves, enslavement didn't just happen in ancient times it <laughs> happens in modern times um yeah. but you know this but is where those significations are like there's crossover there there's because definitely. we talk about incarceration as being a mm -hmm. six and 12th house signification mm -hmm. and like at least in the u.s the incarceration system is basically slavery yeah it is yeah and even i mean it's i feel like pr prisons certainly go with the 12th house and imprisonment um but there's this I, the servitude piece mm. is definitely a sixth house you know um i think of you know the sixth house being um the subterranean place under underneath the horizon so it has a lot to do with our bodies our, the physical form matter all of that and so it has a lot to do with how we're using our bodies how we're using our bodies to serve right um and yeah labor f physical yep. labor falls in, in the wage six. labor wage labor yes and so yes when we're it's like who are we serving what are we what are we in service to when we're talking about the sixth house and um if we're in servitude oftentimes that looks like to our to the jobs that we hold right and sometimes that's not for some people that can be very you know, their jobs, their everyday um, work or service can be very fulfilling, but sometimes that can feel like they're enslaved to it. And I think a lot of people um, have that experience because of capitalism and <laughs> that, that fun yep. thing called capitalism. Um, <laughs> if we're talking about capitalism, we might as well like just plug the term exploitation um, mm, because yep. capitalism is essentially the exploitation of land and labor. And so yes. one thing that we might think about when we're talking about the sixth house is the ways that our um, bodies are exploited either by ourselves um, and or by others. And I think often, you know, the sixth and the 12th house are very like, we're looking at systems of oppression. So we're looking at how the system exploits us and how we fall subject to that exploitation um, consciously or unconsciously because it's so normalized in our society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, yeah. and I think um, something about, like just thinking about how normalized burnout is right mm, and burnout mm-hmm. being a very mar- martial thing mm-hmm. um, I think about that a lot as relating to the sixth house and yeah for sure like how we use our bodies and the body as this site of production right and as this site of like generation of through labor and what that means because oftentimes that means a kind of disconnection from the body actually and like you know lots of people become ill from stress become ill from repeated you know movements or whatever it is um so yeah definitely I would say like exploitation being a really important word in relation in relationship to the six mm-hmm. yeah <clears throat> and just to pull out of um the work and labor part for a second and not that it's not all connected but um just to speak about the the body piece the physical the physical piece of the sixth house and its correlation to illness and injury um I always say the sixth house is the everything that you have to do to keep yourself from getting ill and and mm-hmm. <laughs> and um and injured Maybe. right so I'm in a six house mm-hmm. perfection. Erin, you're almost out of yours <laughs> very, very soon. Lucky <laughs> duck. Um, and, and yeah, it's, I think when people turn 29 or um, 41 or 17, these six house years, um, it's your, your physical form becomes, you become a lot more, um, invested in the maintenance and the ma- maintaining your physical form. Um, I feel like at 29, that's like a, a especially potent time because the Saturn returns happening and, mm-hmm. you know, there's this overall feeling of like needing to get serious about being an adult human being, um, <laughs> and all the things that come with that, which is so fucking annoying. Um, <laughs> recognizing mortality Um, you know the sixth house being a place where we um, have entered the underworld so in some ways Mm -hmm. like it's in some ways it's death but it's Mm -hmm. also like how we are um, maintaining our bodies in order to preserve them uh, and how we might also maintain our like our spirits and our um, you know when we're thinking about service, I'm thinking a lot about humility and um, part of dying, part of living well is dying well. Um, And I think a lot about how dying well involves being humble and being participatory in the collective. And uh, when I see strong six house placements, I see a lot of people who are doing like unionizing work, um, who are organizing as a collective um, to uh, support each other, uh, and, and to support their bodies in that process Mm -hmm. as well. Um, so like we might even look at, you know, classes, um, like health classes, uh, whether they're, Mm -hmm. um, physical exercise classes in nature or, um, like any place where you might go as a group to, um, to, to, to address your physical body. Uh, Mm -hmm. and, and some of that is, uh, is union meetings (laughs) when you're in an especially oppressive work environment Mm -hmm. I love that I definitely think about that with like collective organizing um as a very sixth house thing and and I think about the sixth house as well a lot as in terms of care work and Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um because what does it mean for example um for disabled people um like mm-hmm. what do we look at when we look at the sixth house in those terms and for people who can't do day-to-day work for example um I think of mutual aid I think of like mutual care uh a lot of which communities which are kind of uh what's the term I'm looking for, which are kind of like deliberately and historically um oppressed and like um kind of disappeared by the state you know have to develop these mechanisms of like survival and self-sufficiency um Mm -hmm. which definitely depend a lot on kind of collective care right and and mutual care and I think um I think a lot about that in relation to the sixth house and about like 
I think in the workplace that looks like organizing and like unionizing mm. um and yeah I definitely um I would like agree with that I think it's also it reminds me too of how Mars gets its joy in the sixth house and if we think about Mars as war and we think about the matters of life and death that come up in war um and how when you're on the battlefield, uh, the people that you are fighting with uh, are also the people mm -hmm. that you have to take care of because those are the people that take care of you and have your back mm -hmm. when you're like going in. Um, and if somebody gets injured, you have to kind of um, support those people on the battlefield. So when we're, mm -hmm. when we're talking about Mars being the planet that rejoices in the six, we're also talking about like the collective the collective action that might mirror like an um an army troop mm. uh, I this don't is know so the, interesting it's... because it's like you know thinking about what do they say when you like go when you join the army or like the armed forces it's like you're you're serving right like you're mm -hmm. serving in the armed for mm. forces they say thank you for your service yeah thank you for your service exactly um Wow. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It, it is this place that has a lot to do with like what you're almost like the battles that you face on a on a day to day basis. Um, the 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 battle of like being the, the battles that you face just by being a human being in this world in this in this time. Um, yeah, yeah. And also like. <laughs> It's, I think, a lot about derivative houses, too. So mm -hmm. um, for anybody listening, derivative houses is where you um, look at, you know, the general significations of the houses and you sort of move the houses based on, um, so like the sixth house is the fifth house from the second house. Um, so what are fifth house significations, children, hobbies, creative projects, joy, um, the joy, like the sixth house is the joy of your bank account, mm -hmm. uh, essentially, because the, the second house is your resources, mm -hmm. your bios, as the ancients called it, um, and your bank. So, uh, what puts money in the bank work? <laughs> yeah. 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 It's about survival, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, and that reminds me what you said about planets like treading water there and kind mm. of that sense of like mm. movement because uh in a lot of cases survival kind of requires us to be constantly like adapting and moving and to some extent in a capitalist world struggling mm -hmm. um and I think yeah that feels very like martial to me as well. mm -hmm. yeah and you know we brought it up before but like work right so just you'll find the work that you your job I think like your workplace activity your co-workers um, all of that would fall in the sixth house and I'm thinking like sixth house type people um, I think about my ex he has um, the moon in Libra in the sixth house and it rules his his third house um, the moon does rules his third house and um, he's just always worked in worked in like in the service industry um bartender waiter um as like in in local restaurants basically like he's just that's what he does and he's so good and he's someone that doesn't really feel like they are like I don't know. I feel like he has this thing where he needs to be of service in some way in order to like feel okay, to like feel like he's like worthy, honestly, um, which is an issue in and of itself, right? But um, <laughs> I'm not saying he has issues. It's just, you know, you're worthy. You're worthy regardless of what, are you, what you're doing. You don't need to be working to be worthy. But um, yeah, just thinking about, and, and Kirsten, you have your moon in the sixth house too. Um, and just thinking about how, yeah, there's this thing with um, six house people and by six house people, I mean, you know, you have your son there or your chart ruler there or um, your sex light or perhaps, um, yeah, a stellium or something in the six house. Um, those are people who I always say like in, in client readings, I'm like, do you live to work? 
<laughs> like, are you, do you work too much? Um, because those people, you know, that's where they, that's where they reside. That's where a lot of their energy resides in this six house space of like, you know, the constant toiling, the constant, just literally like work and labor. The maintenance that makes you ill. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> um, it's like you're doing work to get out of that cycle, but then perpetuating the cycle mm-hmm. by doing the work. Which is, and a lot of I it, also think, oh, sorry, sorry go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, uh, give, an, give another example of a six house person. Um, I was talking to this porn star on Twitter. I mean, sorry, on Tinder. Um, he's like a very, very, very like prolific. Um, I mean, I've been, he's not like very, he's, he's only like in his 30, early 30s. So it's not like, you know, someone who's been around for forever, but he's a porn star, um, an adult film actor who um, is like basically contracted with one of the biggest porn sites, right? So he does a lot of work. He has, um, whatever, I don't have to get into that, but I was talking to him. Um, he's a Scorpio and um, he has He's a Scorpio with a Gemini rising. So all his Scorpio stuff is in the sixth house. And he has like a bunch of Scorpio planets in the sixth house, including his chart ruler. Um, And then I'm pretty sure, yeah, he was born during the the Mars retrograde in Aries in 88. So he has this Mars in Aries, like ruling all his Scorpio sixth house planets. And literally like, his where he works a lot right and his work in, involves his physical body like his form um did i say that right i'm not like thinking i got his chart wrong i know he has a six house some six house stuff going on um but now i'm like i think he has jupiter in the first which would explain such a big phallus <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> um, there's something, yeah. He has a bunch of six house stuff, regardless. Um, and I remember thinking, like, oh, of course, like you use your physical body, like your body is used for your your labor, right? Um, yeah, that's another like random example of like a six house person. And also, I was just he was like posting the other day. I don't consume his his um his video it's okay content if you do there's no shame no I, I actually don't because um I was actually like interested in getting to know him and I was like I don't want to just like look at his dick all the time but um <laughs> <laughs> I was watching he was um he's been like forging these knives he's been posting these videos of him in a forge right he's a Scorpio his birthday is the I think the same day as mine or the day after um and you know, he has this Mars and Aries and this like six house Scorpio stuff going on. And he's literally like, he posted a video the other day on Tuesday on Mars's day of him making a knife in the forge. <laughs> and I, I was just like, you can't more. get any more Mars than this. Like it's too fucking good. Um, and again, like using your body to like, and, and that's what Mars a, a really huge Mars signification is the, um, the, what is it called? People who make tools, forge, forge people, forge masters, um, um blacksmiths. blacksmiths. Thank you. Yeah. So Mars, Mars is a blacksmith and that's one of the fo- forms that Mars takes, like literally making the tools for war, for, for labor, for work. Um, so yeah. This is- this is really funny because I'm at the end of my sixth house year and all year I've been talking about getting really fancy knives. I have <laughs> natal Mars in the six. Um, wow. And so my partner and I agreed that we would um, get me a couple, two knives for my birthday, of yes. Mars in the six and Gemini. Um, <laughs> of course you need to. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, it's just really funny to hear that. Um, Cause yeah. I had thought about that before, but the other thing that I think about for six house people that um we have kind of already talked about is like by the people for the people um Mm -hmm. like six house people tend to be working sort of I don't want to say undercover but um they don't they don't necessarily show up so publicly they're sort of in the trenches Mm -hmm. so to speak again like a war reference um but they're working in service to the people um but like on the ground they're not like necessarily the people who are um plugged into the like 
power hierarchy. I mean, mm-hmm. of course you could be like, you could have sort of a general, like an army general. Right. Um, Reminds me of Bernie, honestly, Bernie Sanders. Yeah. Who, we don't have his time chart, <laughs> but the chart that folks use and rectify is a Scorpio rising chart, which puts um, Mars and Aries, sorry, not Mars, the moon and Aries um, with Mars, actually both, both Mar- mm-hmm. Mars, moon and Aries in the sixth house. Um, and yeah, that, I mean, of course he's like one of the most famous po- politicians now, but, um, for decades and decades and decades, that wasn't the case. And he's just been someone that's always literally been like a warrior for fighting or fighting for working people, um, in this country. So yeah, that reminded me of that. Mm-hmm. Someone who's just like in the trenches and like actually doing the work. Yeah. Yeah, I think of people, six house people as very much also, yeah, relating to that kind of like disrupting, right? And like disrupting, Mm -hmm. like wanting to disrupt the status quo in some way or another. And again, Mars kind of being disruptive or like sort of breaking things, (laughs) essentially. (laughs) Um, And kind of going in and like, you know, wanting to kind of get people together to like challenge things to challenge certain systems mm-hmm. or certain like systems of power um to me is is also very martial um and yeah I think of yeah lots of so many organizers I know who have like very significant uh six house placements as well yeah. um and how that manifests in different ways depending on what those placements are and uh what that house is as well or what sign it is um mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm that, curious about you guys' six house placements and if you have any personal antidotes. I mean, I know Erin just sh- shared about your two knives <laughs> as, a, as a graduation gift from your six house year. Um, mm. Yeah, any other any other things to share about that? Yeah, I'm trying to think. I mean, I have a six house moon, so, which rules all of my cancer planets. So I have, yeah kind of my personal planets in cancer uh or not all of them but some mercury venus um so yeah those two houses for me well the 10th house and the sixth house for me are very uh yeah linked together and i think um there's a quality to to the kind of pisces moon i have which is very much about like i don't know i just really like bringing people together <laughs> like again just that Jupiter sense of like uniting around some kind of like vision um yeah just like I feel like I'm I mean it's probably my cancer planet as well but I'm kind of like the mum person (laughs) that like will be like feeding people and like making sure people are kind of like taking care of their bodies and and that kind of Mm -hmm. thing and like resting and I'm not so much like the kind of I might not be like such a like direct action person, but I'm kind of there to, yeah, provide in some way and mm-hmm. like kind of um, that Jupiterian sense of like faith and kind of like uniting mm-hmm. around something um, definitely present. Um, I'm trying to think if I have any like, I feel like specific. Like I know so m- I have so many, or I meet so many, or I have so many clients that are. Libra risings and a lot of them have um Venus in Pisces in the sixth house Mm. and like often like in a night chart so it's like the most benefic planet in the chart and it's like you know what what the planet that represents them in the chart um and almost always they're like activists of some kind (laughs) um and do a lot of like you know care work within within the activist whatever scene they're in um and just like yeah really really need to be of service like truly Mm -hmm. and in this way where you know they're almost like this guardian angel (laughs) you know Mm -hmm. it's like there's so much love and compassion and um yeah, just a lot of love to give to folks in, in positions or in scenarios that aren't that where they're not really receiving. Um, another thing that comes up for me with six house people, especially if like, um, Mars is related in some way. So if Mars rules the six or is in the six or, you know, a a Martian planet in the six, whatever, um, 
like very, very good at, uh, really, really good in a crisis. Six house people mm-hmm. can be yeah. so fucking good in a crisis. Um, <laughs> oh my God. I said, so I Drew Levante just texts me <laughs> and he's like such a six house yeah. person, um, sun, Mars, Mercury, and Aries. <laughs> so I'm like, he just texted me, just he now. Just texted me like popped up on my screen. <laughs> I, <I'm> do. Like, <laughs> I do. Um, I'm invoking him. No, but yeah, six house people um, are really good at just like, you know, yeah, re- putting down whatever, like just being Dressing able to, wound. yeah, it's like the like just really do it quickly. Thing. Yeah, the, exactly. The I mean, yeah, like um, emergency, like street medics, protest, right. you know, protest medics. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's incredible. First responders. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I had, um, I have a Mars ruled fourth um, uh, with Mars in the sixth and Mars retrograded through my fourth house this year and I evacuated a wildfire. Um, Uranus was also on my IC at the time. So there's like a lot of things that were shifting. Things. You also fell in <laughs> was, love. I also <laughs> fell in love. I have a Venus ruled IC. Thing, yeah. Venus in the fourth. Mm. <laughs> evacuated a wildfire with my partner. Um, oh. uh, and turns out we both do really well in crises. Um, so that was certainly a learning experience. I would say, you know, Mars rules my midheaven too uh, from the six. So I find myself, um, you know, sometimes I think about it as like a Saturn ruled ascendant being very reserved. I tend to be pretty discreet, but I think it's also because Mars is averse to my midheaven from the six that I tend to veer towards more collective action and community organizing. Uh, than I do towards like trying to take up a leadership role Um, and I'm much uh, you know when and if I'm like practicing like being a spotlight it's usually writing on behalf of other people Mm -hmm. the other thing that I um, including myself in that group of people and so the other thing that I would say is having Mars in the six has certainly been a lesson in my own health and the way that I take care of my body. Um, I'm kind of a klutz. <laughs> uh, my partner says it's not a thing, but I'm like, I have Mars in the six. It's absolutely a thing. <laughs> I break things. Um, and it's ruled by Mercury and fall. So um, it's like, and they're, they're configured by square, but it's definitely challenging. And I, one of the things that this sixth house year has been bringing up for me is a I've had to spend a lot of money on health care that isn't covered by health insurance um, and b probably more importantly I've been navigating a lot of internalized ableism um, which is like systemic conditioning um, and just really developing a new relationship to my body uh, that is much more like through a disability justice lens so looking mm-hmm. at the work of people like um, Leah Lakshmi, Piatsna, Samarasina, um, and uh, that whole crew of people who are doing disability justice work and just trying to uh, come from a place of like what my people would say to me. Uh, in I have a I have a pretty significant back injury, so I've also had to like um, I've had to get a more appropriate desk and a more appropriate chair and. Um, it's, I, I think that the, uh, and then I've begun to talk about astrology and talk about my work in a way that like is less ableist or at least um, less neglectful. I think, mm-hmm. I think I had experiences before where I potentially neglected people who um, were impacted by ableism. Uh, and so that's been a lesson. It's been very humbling, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was something else I was yeah. going to say about the sixth house, but I don't remember what it was. Well, I will just piggyback off of that. I feel I'm glad you brought that up because that's definitely some themes I've been experiencing as well. I don't have planets in the sixth house except Chiron. I have Chiron <laughs> in the sixth house. Um, and yeah, I mean, what's been coming up a lot for me, I, my Chiron's at the exact same degree and minute as my grandmother's. Um, and she's my last living grandparent. Um, and she's 
her birthday is, is in a couple of days. She's turning 79. She's a Pisces. Um, an eclipse baby, actually. She was born in a Virgo, a Virgo eclipse, um, Virgo lunar eclipse, which, you know, we're having a Virgo full moon today. Um, so she's on my mind. But yeah, just thinking about her pain and she has the same disease that you know, I have, it's passed down through my, my mother line, um, my maternal line. She, her mother died of kidney problems. She has kidney problems. My mom has it. I have it. Um, so yeah, just thinking about, um, you know, what I've inherited from her and, and how Chiron, you know, is this wound that we can't fully heal. Right. Like I can't, um, I can't really do anything about the disease I have until, until, um, I potentially would need like a new kidney. Right. So it's this thing that I've always had and will continue to have. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's a lot of that has come up for me too. It's thinking more about, um, ableism and, and also, yeah, like really, really like accepting the fact that I have a disease, like I have like a, a serious illness, right? It affects more than just my kidneys. I have a brain aneurysm because of it. Um, and having to sh- like, that part of that was the reason that was partly the reason why I like could not work in, um, in advertising or just for anyone <laughs> for corporations anymore. Right. Like, got to the point where I realized when I was diagnosed in 2018, like I need to, I need to work for myself because I can't be at the whims of these people and these like clients. Like I don't give a fuck about Samsung and like (laughs) this fucking photo shoot that we have to do. Like, and you, and you're emailing me about it at midnight and I don't give a fuck, you know what I mean? (laughs) So, um, yeah, it was then when I realized like being in an office was, um, making me feel just sick. Like, like walk, like it's just all of it, all of it, having to contribute to the whole system. This is pre pandemic when, you know, I had to, um, I had to, to take a fair, a bus and a train and a ferry for an hour and a half to work every, you know, one way and back just, just to sit at my desk to say that I was there. I, my work could have been entirely done, um, you know, sitting at home and not having to like, like put all the stress in my body just to be there in person. Um, and so things like that, that have been coming up a lot for me over the past couple of years since being diagnosed. And then especially in this sixth house year where for the first time ever, I'm like, I'm, I have all this authority over my life and over my work where I'm working for myself. Um, I have my own, I'm sitting in my own office. That's like very yellow and bright because my sixth house is Leo. <laughs> and I was but like, I also, need a fucking it's yellow couch. By your son and it's ruled by my son. Exactly. In the ninth house. And so yeah, exactly. um, the staring at my, my son and Leo and regulus incense right now, that's like, <laughs> the sun is shining on them. Um, Mm. but yeah, there's, you know, realizing, like you said, I got this really nice desk. I got a really nice chair. Um, cause sitting hurts, Mm -hmm. (laughs) sitting hurts your body a lot. Um, and I think that's a lot of my like Chiron work and just my sixth house work is kind of taking authority over, you know, my, my life, my physical body, um, the labor that I do, the work that I do and, um, yeah, like trying to make my practice, um, more inclusive of folks with disabilities, um, and, and illnesses, chronic illness, especially like, I mean, not just especially every, every, everyone, everyone who has any sort of illness or, um, chronic, um, or disability, yeah. 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 Chronic mm-hmm. or acute. Exactly. Um, which, you know, you realize it's most of us. <laughs> yeah. There's a beautiful episode on, um, I think it's how to survive the end of the world with Leah Lakshmi, Piepsna, Samarasina, mm-hmm. um, where they talk about how, um, how it, there's like some ridiculous 
uh, percentage of people who have a disability but just don't know it it's like 90 yeah. percent. Mm-hmm. it's yeah. like a it's a overwhelming majority but because disability is not normalized um we live in a society that Our is house. not set up to support people who um exactly yeah uh, <laughs> it's like the system that you can't see it's like you yeah. know how sometimes people talk about how pisces is like the ocean or like capitalism is the ocean that you're swimming in and you you can't see it right um, right. because you're so used to it it's like so obvious and so apparent but you're also in it and so you can't zoom it's hard to zoom out it's hard Mm -hmm. to see it from a different perspective I think that that's um that's how common disability is Mm -hmm. and how much we like again keep it in the dark Um, yeah Mm -hmm. I think about um yeah just like I you know the ruler of my sixth house is the sun and it's like this nice Scorpio sun in the ninth house like cool but it's conjunct (laughs) my malefic out of sect Mars right um and like that plus a couple other things my ascendant ruler and detriment um will speak to like my my physical issues right I have a lot of like physical problems um invisible my mars is completely yep. invisible it's invisible illnesses exactly mm, like, exactly I think my that's... mars is combust you cannot see it it's like two degrees three degrees from the sun um silently silent but deadly sort of vibes right <laughs> um <laughs> yeah so you would not that's be like, able to tell oh. looking at me that i have you know that i'm like suffering from chronic disease mm. um but it's invisible it's inside and um it's important to remember that and recognize that mm-hmm. that like a lot of us are suffering a lot or I, I don't like to say suffering but a lot of us um oh a lot I think of we us can are, say suffering like yeah. the world is not and and we'll probably talk about this more when we talk about the 12th house but like yeah. being human is a hard thing to be like very being hard. mortal is hard yeah. there it's painful it's very painful yeah. we don't need to deny that <laughs> You're right. You're right. You're right. Um, I just don't want, I just don't want to attach, um, suffering to everyone with a disability, you know, because, um, yes, we all suffer as human beings, but it doesn't mean that, you know, everyone who has a disability is like suffering all the time. Um, because we're all just living, we're all just we're all just living. A lot of living is suffering, a lot of it is joy and happiness and love and all the things. But um yeah, I you know, if you're out there and you're listening, if you're out there, (laughs) if you're listening, which I'm sure you are, if you literally wouldn't know if you're not able to hear me right now. Um check check your sixth house look at you know the planet that rules it um Mm -hmm. and you know planets in the sixth house will speak to um the type of I would say it it would speak to um maybe the type of work that you do um perhaps the type of roles that you take on in in your work and in your daily like labors and the service that you that you provide for the world um, and then the ruler of the sixth house as well, check out where that is, its condition. And its condition will speak a lot to um, both like, you know, your work environments and the type of environments that are best suited for you. Um, and also like, you know, where you would find work. And also, you know, just practical tips. If you're looking for a new job, check out the ruler for, of, the, of the sixth house um, see, see when that's going to be in good condition for you. Um, you know, for me, it's the sun. So like, I want, you know, sun and Aries, sun and Leo might be good time for, for work. If I were looking for a job, which Mm -hmm. I'm not, but (laughs) you know, I would, you know, look towards those times when the sun is exalted and in domicile for, um, you know, just in terms of timing for better opportunities. Um, and then when planets move through your sixth house as well, you know, Jupiter moving through the six, Venus moving through the six, even mm-hmm. Saturn will speak to, um, you know, new, maybe not new opportunities, but depending on the planet, honestly. Um, yeah. and, and then as well, on top of that, of course, for, you know, things having to do with illness and injury and, and health things, 
Um, it's, you know, with health, it's like, you definitely cannot ever neglect the, the first house and the ruler of the first house. You can't neglect the luminaries as well. Cause they both speak to the sun, more vitality and the moon, more about the physical, um, form, but certainly the sixth house will speak to, you know, the timing of illness and injury, um, and, and sort of like the, the type, <laughs> the type of um, illness, injury, disease, what have you that can come up. And it's one of those things where, you know, it's not fun. It's not fun to talk about, <laughs> you know, potentially getting sick and all that, but um, we're humans and that yeah. happens to us. We're so fragile. We're just these little meat sacks, like <laughs> anything, like we're just, we're so fragile. And, and so it must be talked about. I think I that's another is... go ahead. Oh, <laughs> oh no, I was just gonna say I think also health is very precarious under capitalism, right? To come back to that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um but it's conditional um in lots of ways. I mean, I live in the UK, at least we have a free healthcare service. Obviously that's not the case for you guys in the US. But uh but we might be moving that way anyway. <laughs> we'll know. we'll see. But um it's kind of, you know, even in terms of things I think of um, just the way it ties into like the welfare state and and lots of things like that. Like, I think it comes back to that idea of people kind of who gets disappeared and who gets kind of like, you know, pushed to the margins and and kind of like kept in the darkness because um, because body, those bodies are like not um, productive in a certain way. Right. Or not. Mm-hmm. kind of deemed to be able to have agency in a certain way and and I think that yeah I think about that a lot with the sixth house and health because definitely I like I would look at the first house and I would look at the rule of the first house and there's so many like I think health is a super like complex thing mm-hmm. but um but yeah I think our relationship to kind of um agency around our health and kind of um just again like how that relates to the kind of systems that are in place that are actually actively working against our well-being um in so many ways is is a really important thing and I think about the kind of social model of disability and um and how that kind of speaks to the idea and not everyone um subscribes to that model of disability but it's you know the idea that the world essentially and and the societies we live in aren't accommodating to disabled people and that people are disabled by the world that we live in Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. you know we live in an incredibly ableist world and so um yeah I think about that a lot as well in terms of like it's really interesting that yeah so many people have disabilities that they might not even realize but um but I guess it's that thing of like why is that in a way like because we don't necessarily have those like those conversations or because there's like literally oppression and like shame Mm -hmm. and stigma attached to these things so um yeah I think of yeah again like I have the moon in sick house like um chronic illness is like something I deal with I have Chiron right on my ascendant like it's it's very much like there if you if you look for it in my chart Mm -hmm. but um yeah I just I think it's really kind of interesting to it's something I'm really interested in like always thinking about around this health as well and I think it's worth noting that anyone with strong success placements is also going to be uniquely like and we could even say this without astrology like anyone with a chronic or acute injury or illness is going to be able to speak to that experience Um, in a way that other people who are having that experience or other people who aren't having that experience might be able to better understand, you know, if we, Mm. um, if we have a story to tell, um, and we can tell it, then we're maybe able to give other people the opportunity to rally with us. Um, Mm. And I think a lot about the sixth and the 12th house for that matter is like the welcome committees to the new world. So Mm. um, like people with placements in the sixth house are like very skilled at um, helping other people look at their shit. (laughs) 
<laughs> because you know you have to sort of go into the underworld um, and nobody wants to do that nobody wants to look at their stuff it's not as curious we have to not, look at it's our not own fun shit. but you can't you can't address a wound um mm. it, like you can't bandage up a wound you can't take care of a wound if you don't look at it mm -hmm. um, you have to be able to look at it in order to heal it and and when i say look i i mean figuratively i'm realizing that that even is a little bit ableist language um but you have to be able to um to approach or confront the wound uh, in order mm -hmm. to uh, bandage it up and give it the medicine that it needs and begin to understand it. So uh, when we see people with strong su success placements, yes, maybe you, um, and to be fair, this doesn't, so having a strong success placement doesn't necessarily mean that you are forever dealing with illness and injury. Yeah, um, exactly. But you might be somebody who is like, uniquely equipped to be organizing nurses, um, nurses. yeah or or supporting mm -hmm. other people's health yeah. mm -hmm. um and and you might be somebody who is able to see that and and speak to it to the masses uh, mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. something to keep in mind uh if you're looking at your sixth house and you get really scared and you're like oh no the you know i'm gonna die it's like that's not actually what's happening but <laughs> i think but yeah I mean, yeah you will die but <laughs> i mean everybody's gonna <laughs> die <some> but <laughs> but you, but you yeah. might but you might question, well, what are the other ways that um, my sixth house shows up in my life? Uh, mm. And and if it's, you know, I was talking to Diana Rose Harper recently, um, and she might have been Friend referencing another astrologer, um, but she mentioned that like there are often things that are that we do on accident, like. They, external things that find us somehow situations experiences people um what happens when we do those things on purpose so if you find yourself mm -hmm. uh in like oppressive work environments and advocating regularly for safe and healthy work conditions uh what happens when you then take that uh experience or skill set and apply it actively as opposed to reactively Mm. Um, and you mm. do it with more intention how does that create like a more successful experience for you for you and for the people mm. around you yeah and I think about um like a couple of weeks ago Alyssa from Praxis Astrology who also um has done some amazing work on the six and twelve houses um was talking about this and, and the idea that you know obviously as consulting astrologers we're not going to go into a session and say to someone who has a sixth house moon that they're going to be you know that means that they're dealing with like yeah. chronic illness right you would never do that but I think that's where I always kind of for me or at least in in my practice what I've seen a lot is that um yeah things always come back a lot to like care work whatever that looks like um and I use that term quite broadly and that's also a term that Leah Lakshmi Kepner Samasuna uses um that's their book. Um, they wrote a book called Care Work um, about disability justice. And I think a lot about like the fact that union organizing is care work and the fact that um, doing a rent strike is care work and mutual aid is care work. And also just like taking care of a relative is care work. Like um, sex work is care work. Uh, I think mm -hmm. Alice Buckley Cat mm -hmm. talks about that. Um, so yeah, I think a lot about kind of the sixth house in those terms of like that actually kind of for me is what links the sort of work and the health significations um of the sixth house because I think initially when I started learning about it I was like so what is it that really like ties these things together like surely there has to be what's the kind of like essence of of the sixth house um and I yeah that's kind of where I've at the moment arrived at in terms of thinking about it um as something that yeah, those two things are very like intertwined. I think. We've been talking about the sixth house for a while. Yeah, we <laughs> should yeah, really so we need to hop over to we the got other into side. a vicious cycle. A vicious, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, let's get into the twelfth, because um, I think a lot of okay. So when I think about the difference between the sixth and the twelfth, when we get into the twelfth, we're talking about. Saturn, Saturn land. And this is my mm -hmm. specialty because Saturn <laughs> is yeah. the most um, dignified planet in my chart. I have it in the 12th in Aquarius in a day chart. 
um, direct, very, very Saturnian, um, 12th house. And yeah, I mean, significations of the 12th house we have, well, first of all, it's referred to the house as the house of evil spirit or bad spirit or the bad Daemon, Daemon, I can never say that word right, um, evil Daemon, um, kind of like that, that um, the devil on your shoulder. Um, if you, you listen to the last episode of the 5th and the 11th, we talked about that, the angel, the, the Jupiterian angel on your shoulder versus the Saturnian devil on your shoulder. Um, <laughs> and, you know, what I think about, you know, if, if the sixth house is, um, maladies of the body and of the physical form, the 12th house, again, we're going above the horizon. So we're up in the spirit plane. Um, it's about maladies of the mind and the spirit. Um, and so, you know, sixth house, physical health, 12th house, mental health. And, um, we, and we get into this space. Yeah. Having to deal with, um, incarnation you know like being being born as a human <laughs> being and um I always think to Jason Holly who we started the the season mm-hmm. with talking about sect um he talks about you know Saturn oh he did the best talk about the 12th house like at Norwalk 2020 it was so fucking good um but (laughs) talked about Saturn (laughs) yeah being the um you know like when you okay I'll put it this way and this kind of um going back to something that Aaron had spoke about um or both of you had spoke about you know when when the sun rises over the ascendant or over the east um, for using quadrant house systems, that's immediately going into the twelfth house because that um, the ascendant and horizon line would be the beginning of the first house. And if we're using quadrant mm-hmm. systems, um, and so you can think of you know the eastern horizon or that ascendant point as a birth, right? Like the sun, the sun rises, it's born again, um, the day begins, and you know that's that's the starting point, and the way that he painted this picture always like it just stuck with me so deeply is that before that birth before that moment of um of rising and re-entering this above above the earth plane this field um the day consciousness as as jason would put it it was it spent you know 12 hours underneath the earth in this underworld journey so with that birth um, comes a little bit of a disorientation, right? Um, you're like Aaron said, you're entering this, this new world, this new space. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you're born and you come out of your, you know, whoever gave birth to you, you're all of a sudden like <laughs> you're, you're exposed to it's day cold. consciousness. <laughs> yeah, it's cold. <laughs> It's dry. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's, it's dry. cold and dry, like like fucking Saturn, you have, like, right? The moist, warm mother's womb. <laughs> yes, and you, yeah. it's bright. You're like you're like, oh, what the fuck? Cold. It's cold. That's it's why bright. babies scream. I'm yeah, kidding. that's why babies scream. Some white man's holding you all of a sudden. What? <laughs> <laughs> I always think about that. Like, I came out, uh, and then like I came out with my like. You know, my mom took a bath when, when her water broke and she just, Pisces rising, right? Um, <laughs> and then I was like born and I'm like being held by this white dude, a bunch of white, <laughs> a bunch of like medical students <laughs> staring at me. Oh God, oh, no. <laughs> and I was just like, I, mean, I don't know what I was like. I, I literally don't know. I was, I was born. But anyway, back to the... T- <laughs> Back to this story. Um, yeah, so planets here in the 12th house have this, you know, they're, they're fresh, they're new. Mm. And the, what's really beautiful about that is, you know, you have this sort of disorientation. It's almost like this grogginess when you first wake up. Um, mm. You might remember your dreams. You might remember what happened at night. You're in, still in this sort of in-between space, right? This liminal space where 
you're not quite, you haven't been quite super far removed from that, from that nighttime terrestrial journey, but you're exposed to this like diurnal, um, yeah, this, this diurnal, um, consciousness where, you know, Saturn is there to be like, yep, you're human now. Here's your physical form, right? Like here's all the shit you have to deal with. It's going to hurt, but like suck it up. Um, (laughs) and I think when we're in the 12th house, we were, it's this very liminal space. And so, um, we can kind of, we kind of can exist in between those two worlds. Um, and, and with that, it might be a place where we, we need to return to sometimes where we try to return to in order to remember, to remember what it's like, um, in the underworld or in that, in the, in the womb and that nighttime journey. Um, but really when it comes down to is like, you can't, like, you can't go back. Right. And that's Saturn being like, mm. nope, you this have is left for real. The blissful existence. Yeah. Of yeah. Disincarnate. Exactly. You are. You have left one skin. And now you are. Yeah. yeah. I think, I don't know if, ever, if you guys have ever seen that Tame Impala, <laughs> Impala video, Mind Mischief. Um, or is it mind mischief? Yeah. Mind mischief. And it's like this, it's such a good video, but, um, there's a point where he, like the main character is like a, it's like an animation. He's like kind of being reincarnated and he like kind of flies through the rings of Saturn and like through all the planets to kind of get back to earth. And I always think of that, like we, we have to like kind of go through like in order to become incarnate like in our physical form so we have to kind of like go through Saturn and Saturn is you know the limit um of our solar system it's that planet that's out there um sort of like guarding guarding the what's what's real what we know of, of what's real based on the fact that it's the last, it's the farthest thing that we can see with the naked eye, not including the stars out there, but in terms of planets. And so it sort of is this like gatekeeper in a way. Um, and the 12th house is that space. And that's like the number one word that has come to me throughout my, my Saturn return in the 12th house, um, for, for a good chunk of last year and into this year, um, is space. Oh, (laughs) <laughs> Wait, I really like the word gatekeeper. Oh, gatekeeper. <laughs> that's that's a good one too. Um, but I space, did. space is like mm. the the word for me. Um, yeah. and I think especially with like a Saturn and Aquarius, and we're talking about, you know, it's a fixed air sign. Um, but Saturn Saturn draws boundaries, it like makes it draws the lines. It's like here's your container, here's your space. And I think, I think of the 12th house as your, your space. It's like your space. It's not for anyone else. It's just for you. And, um, it's your space that Saturn creates for you that is in your head. (laughs) And it's what it's, it's not always in your head, right? It can be physical as well, but, um, it's the space in your mind or your spirit that is just for you. And you get to do what you you want in there right and that space i talked about this with taylor ursula um in the 12th house and hip, hypnosis episode but um that space can be you know it can you can experience that space as a prison right like you can experience it as like oppressive these walls are fucking too high i can't see i don't know how to get out of here um, this is terrifying, right? Like Saturn is like this mean gatekeeper. I like to say like the prison guard Saturn, which tends to be experienced, um, the experience of a lot of night chart people, Saturn can come up as like, you know, the gatekeeper in a mean way, like a prison guard. It's like, you're trapped here. Good luck. Um, <laughs> or it can be experienced as, you know, the safe container for, for you to explore, Um, an escape an escape Mm -hmm. like something that blocks you off from the rest of the world um and yeah a retreat even and that's Mm -hmm. kind of how I've tried to approach my Saturn return um and and like literally like escaping to the other side of the country and um 
like this this apartment is like my Saturn return like retreat space right it's like I have we're in a pandemic I really like I'm here all the time so it was a really big deal for me to find a space that like felt like Saturn and Aquarius in the 12th house to me like I have these like huge windows and like like lots of light can come in but at the same time it's very it's almost like underneath underneath the ground a little bit like it's very cold in here because I don't get a lot of direct sunlight um mm-hmm. and it's so Saturn and Aquarius like this space is such a 12th house space and I really just wanted a place where I could like it felt secure and say it's literally like I'm surrounded by walls too like I don't get a lot of direct sunlight it's very it's it's almost too spot on um <laughs> but at the same time it's like I have so much room it's like my space to kind of be in and explore and I feel safe here. Um, and yeah, I, yeah, that's, I'm like kind of get going on a tangent, but, um, yeah, I'm going to pass it off to one of you guys. (laughs) So I stopped talking about my 12th house. Um, yeah. What are you, what comes up with you guys when you think about the 12th? Yeah. Um, (laughs) yeah, I mean, I'm, in a 12th house perfection year at the moment so um yeah interesting that both of you are in your sixth house perfection year um yeah I definitely agree I think it's it's very much coming into the world and Saturn kind of being like okay like there are limitations to you like there are limitations to how much we can even like connect with other people there are just like inaccessible things like I think of the space inside our heads right like literally our mind and and how that's just no, not somewhere anyone else can go like we're alone in there and I think a lot about that kind of um sense of isolation which can be both really scary in some ways or difficult or challenging um and also yeah definitely um necessary and and safe um in other ways and I think I think about the 12th houses as well like when we're alone I think of it as kind of this sometimes I think of it as like an expanse almost even though the 12th house is kind of feels in a Saturnian way kind of quite um small and constricted and has boundaries and limits but I actually think that sometimes it's like this this big kind of like frozen expanse and when I imagine someone in that you kind of I think when we're alone or when we spend too much time alone we kind of really lose perspective and I think of, yeah, sometimes planets in the 12th house or or kind of when there's a strong 12th house like activation or something, it's that sense of kind of losing oneself and at the same time being asked to like define oneself in the world or to kind of like have a sense of like who we are because Saturn wants that. Um, and I think it's kind of that that wrestling with like, perspective and what happens inside our own head and kind of like also just yeah broader systems and like conditioning and all of those things um and it's really just it feels like a place of like real vulnerability I think which is a really important and like yeah just like a really important thing um I think of like waking up in the morning and that's like one of the most vulnerable times like Mm -hmm. if you wake up with someone else there it's like you feel really vulnerable like Mm -hmm. it's it's yeah it's just like quite um it's like you saw me sleeping you saw my face yes exactly (laughs) it's like wow you're really seeing my face like first thing in the morning breathing breathing on you with my nasty (laughs) breath I'm so vulnerable right now (laughs) exactly it's just like wow like you know at night things kind of and I think uh Jason Holly talks about that with with sex things kind of like merge and Mm -hmm. um it's like undoing almost yeah there's like an undoing and there's less definition and like specificity and like isolation of separate things but then the light comes in Mm -hmm. and it's suddenly like oh wow like everything is like very clear and very like magnified Mm -hmm. (laughs) and the 12th house is just like I mean I have the north node in the 12th house and in Virgo and it's very much like the specificity and the detail and the ways that that becomes like a self undoing as well which is also like a 12th house thing which is like focus over focusing on certain things or like over kind of 
perfectionism or like any of that um kind of stuff which is like almost amped up by by that north node so yeah just thinking about the vulnerability of that i think and and the beauty and like the importance of that i think we really like need that but again we don't necessarily have we're not necessarily taught i think as well like growing up how to keep ourselves like how to kind of cherish those parts of ourselves and like keep those parts of ourselves safe and like nurture them um just like in the world which is like really hard um so yeah i don't know i think like just going through my 12 past perfection it's like a return to that kind of vulnerability and it's kind of weird because obviously we're in a pandemic and i'm not really leaving my house and everyone is kind of having very like 12th house experience but at the same time it feels like a reflection of like also what I like what's happening for me on a personal level and like just grappling with that sense of like self and not self and the boundaries of that and and the vulnerability of that I think is yeah has just been really interesting mm -hmm. Like the undoing piece is so real we should talk about that because <clears throat> I always say like when you're in the 12th house and by that I mean a transit a perfection maybe you know you're in a perfection where the that um, that time lord's in the 12th house um, you have to let yourself fall apart like you just have to um, the 12th house is where we fall apart and it's that it's that space, you know, that safe space, I think, where you can, and not everyone, it's not safe for everyone. Um, but I will say that it's, it's, it's necessary to let yourself go there. Um, because you have to do that in order to figure out how to like put yourself back together. And that's something I'm reminding myself a lot lately with this goddamn Aquarius stellium moving through my 12th house, this assembly, um, mm -hmm. you know, with Aquarius season, it was the sun and we had Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, Saturn. And at one point the moon, when the, the new moon happened, um, all in Aquarius in my 12th. And it's been rough, you know, they've been squaring my, my Scorpio planets. Um, but I've been kind of crumbling under the weight of, you know, Saturn, Saturn pressure. And then on top of all these planets moving through, um, my 12th and it's like all these responsibilities. And I've kind of had to remind myself, like, you gotta let, you gotta let it go. Like, it's okay that the dishes are piling up and that your bed is completely covered in laundry. Like no one's coming over. <laughs> you gotta let yourself fall apart a little bit and then, and then you know it comes back together and that was something at the beginning of my Saturn return in March of last year that was like very loud and clear to me when Saturn entered Aquarius and it began along with the pandemic um, when I was supposed to be moving to California it was like nope for, for first it was like pause Saturn was like pause that word it felt like it was like ringing in my ears like this cosmic pause <laughs> I wish I had a deeper voice maybe 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 yeah. Yoram can um edit that so I sound like really intense like I'm trying to sound like the time nomad um notification so when it says Saturn Saturn like <laughs> pause anyway um <laughs> so yeah the pause piece was big and then also like you know, the fact that I was held in in the sense that um, I was living back at home with my parent and my family in my childhood bedroom. And um, I was I was I was able to fall apart. It's the first time in I think my adult life that, you know, I didn't have a job, you know, I didn't have um, I didn't have like I did have work to do. I was like working on Channy app project, but um, it wasn't like, you know, people were like demanding things of me, like in the day, like um, every day I didn't have to buy groceries. I didn't have to, you know, worry about paying rent. I was just able to completely fall apart and lie on the couch for a couple of weeks and watch Gossip Girl and let my sister and my mom cook for me, you know, and that was the biggest treat. Um, and it yeah, it was unexpectedly so beautiful because I haven't had that in, I don't know, 
I, I think maybe since my, even in my 12th house year, you know, I still, I was still like by myself and, you know, having to take care of myself, which is always a struggle, but, <laughs> but yeah, like being held in that way. So I was able to just like, let, let go, cry, be scared, all the things um, was so important and special. So yeah, I always say when I get clients who are like in 12th house, in the 12th house, I'll just say, um, it's like, you're allowed, you have to let yourself fall apart. You're not a worthless human being. If you lie on the couch for a week and just eat Oreos and do nothing, like you're still worthy of everything. It's, it's just important. Um, because again, that's how you figure out how to put yourself back together. And that's how you figure out like the actual true shape of who you are. The, like you you kind of have to get down and dirty. Um, Mm. yeah. Yeah. What are you going to say? Are you going to, oh, go ahead. Um, yeah, I'll pass over the earring, but, um, yeah, no, that just makes me think of the, the thing about, um, you know, how butterflies, like caterpillars become butterflies, Mm -hmm. how they, you know they make the cocoon and they basically just dissolve like yeah. into goo. goo. <laughs> um, yeah, like they just digest themselves um, into but like they liquid. They completely and... restructure their genetic material. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And they have these like specific cells that like their job is just to like gather everything back into like the right places and like basically build a butterfly from that like soup. Um, yeah I really think of yeah that just really reminds me of that in terms of the 12th house and the kind of like surrender element of it like I keep mm-hmm. thinking about this 12th house year as very like hanged man like in the tarot yes. um or hanged one and yeah it's just like you're just hanging upside down like there's you kind of can't really fight it like or if you do, it just kind of hurts more. <laughs> yeah, it's already um, uncomfortable. And the more you fight it, it's going to be more yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah, the surrender piece it's like is a so forced, big. Yeah, it's like a forced slowing down and like a surrender. And mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm very much like learning to do that. But yeah. Erin. <laughs> yeah, wow. All of this has been really beautiful. And it's great because it's... Um, giving me like a thousand jumping off points um I think I'm thinking a lot just based on um just a follow-up to some of the things that you both were just saying about the book the greatness of Saturn because Saturn gets its joy in the 12th house and this is primarily um rooted in like Vedic astrology and and traditional western astrologer um, but one of the things that this book talks about a lot is how like Saturn doesn't discriminate. Saturn just makes, brings misery to everyone, mm-hmm. um, which is, you know, <laughs> laughable, of course. But uh, that also, I, I'm reminded of a webinar um, that's available on Astrology University with Jason Hawley. Uh, it's the webinar on Capricorn and Myth and Psyche. And he takes us back through Um, different versions of Saturn all the way to this uh, Mesopotamian god Enki and Mm -hmm. there was a um, like in in the ancient myths um, human at at one point the gods were like farming the earth and feeding themselves and they didn't want to do it anymore Um, and Enki was not like some higher up god Um, he lived in the waters of the deep unconscious um, but the other gods would go and propitiate Enki essentially and ask him to do things for them because Enki could sort of see the system and also had this like very intuitive like rooted space in the deep unconscious and so um, the gods went down to propitiate Enki and said you know Enki help us we don't want to work the land anymore and Enki invented humans um, and made a mold for humans and um, the gods sort of made fun of him uh, and they like broke the mold and Mm. uh and said, well, what do you do when a human like doesn't have hands or when a human's incompetent? Or it was funny, he made the incompetent human a government official. Um, <laughs> but he, he, Enki found a role for all of the um, different humans that were created from the various molds. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think about how like the 12th house doesn't discriminate and also like the, the mm-hmm. primary authority is the authority in our, in our mind, but um, that authority 
is created based on the conditions of the system that we live in. So when I'm thinking about the 12th house, I'm thinking about it from a very like traditional Hellenistic perspective, which is that the 12th house is not me, it's not my mind, but it's maybe the things that happen to my mind based on uh, the system in which I live. And the system, mm -hmm. as we know, is inherently oppressive in many ways, even if it's designed to support us and others. And, um, or even if it's designed to support us in those ways. And so when we're talking about Saturn, we're talking about limits, um, but we're also talking about structure uh, and systems. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm thinking about the 12th house, I don't know if anybody has ever called a health insurance company, um, but they generally want to send you to another department and then that department's gonna send you to another department and then that department's gonna send you to another department. And then eventually you might end up back talking to the same person that you started the call with. Um, and it's sort of like a maze. Uh, and so thinking about navigating the system is like navigating the maze. And then suddenly you're dealing with not only whatever physical ailment you have, um, but you're also dealing with the insanity of trying to get um, the care for that physical ailment and physical ailment and um, uh, the just like the question all of the questions that you now have around whether or not you can get care for this thing um, wherein like an extra layer of problems was added on to your physical issues um, and so when I'm thinking about the 12th house I'm thinking about like the labyrinth of the system and navigating the system uh, which is incredibly difficult because again we're in that house where things are that space of the chart where we're feeling disoriented because we've just again left one world entered another um, and in this new place we don't totally have it figured out yet but Saturn has it figured out and Saturn has laid the maze and like and um, laid down the traps and uh, you have to kind of like walk into the trap in order to uh, work your way out of it um, there's no way to like not be navigating obstacles when we're talking about the 12th house um, and so it's the you know labyrinth is labyrinths can be both um a maze that's scary that's hard to get out of and it can be crazy making and it can also be a space of meditation mm -hmm. uh, there are often when you go to like retreat centers or zen centers or um, temples they often have like a labyrinth in their garden as a space where you go to walk around to meditate uh, and so when I'm thinking about the 12th house, I'm thinking about that duality. Um, and the other thing that I also think about when I'm thinking about the 12th house is foreign lands and foreign places, exile, um, and uh, again, incarceration. So like we might be like stuck or isolated um, in a small container um, and or uh, based on some of the things that you both were also sharing, uh, being in a place that's like vastly expansive uh, because it, it's expansive to be in a new place. It feels like there's so much that we don't know. Uh, and so I, I'll never forget, I had a reading with Kelly Surtees a couple of years ago and I have my moon in the 12th house. And one of the things that she had asked me is if I had spent or was considering spending a significant period of time abroad. And obviously I don't think that that's accessible to everyone. Um, nor do I think that that is um, something that I necessarily support for lots of reasons of like, um, you know, cultural appropriation and, um, you know, just coming from a country that is like, quote unquote, incredibly, like has a lot of wealth privilege from colonization. But uh, when, we're, when we are talking about the 12th house, we might be talking about like a sentence or um, being sentenced to live elsewhere in a place that you are, that might be disorienting for you, maybe that you don't speak the language. And so you're trying to navigate that system, which again, becomes like mentally um, crazy making. So mm -hmm. um, when I'm thinking about the 12th house, I'm thinking about like what it means to be othered um, or to feel othered, often we find ourselves like, uh, I, I like the term compare and despair. You're like looking at what other people are doing or what other people have or what other people have created and then like despairing about what you maybe have or haven't done um, in relationship to that. Uh, and so it's a place where like the voices in our head, in our head can um, 
mean that we are othering ourselves. Um, and one of the ways that we sort of work through that is um, figuring out how to like touch the limits um, mm -hmm. of the space that we're in and either find safety within them or um, find a way out of them. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I could go on. I'd love to talk about <laughs> us, but. Something I, um, thank you. That was and the 12th house, it's one of those, I mean, I feel like we're talking about both of these houses for so long because it's like, they're both so vast and there's so much mm -hmm. to say. Um, and I feel that way, especially about the 12th house. It's so like, it's funny for a place where Saturn has its joy. It feels so limitless at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, and something that I want to kind of talk about is the... Um, is the retreat part of it like the 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 rest the rest part of the the 12th house as well um there is a group um that i became familiar with in brooklyn called rest for resistance and that i mean just learning their whole philosophy and then there's also like the nap ministry and um um black i think it's called black power naps um, there's a lot of different groups who, um, you know, their, their activism, their work is around rest and, um, and how, how that is anti-capitalist is to allow ourselves the rest that we need and deserve. Um, and just like, I, I don't know, it blew my mind, honestly, like, and it's, it's, it's hard to develop that um, and to really like center that. And that's been a huge, huge problem for me being a internally malefic person, you know, like very, very Martian. It's like, I need to do, I need to, to act. Mm -hmm. If I'm not, if I'm not working, if I'm not doing, then like, what am I? Um, and, and trying to resist that literally rest, rest for resistance. Um, mm -hmm. And, and how, yeah, the, the 12th house is this place where we do find some profound rest. Um, and rest isn't restless, isn't, is not, sorry, rest isn't not restless sometimes, you know, like, mm -hmm. um, it can be really difficult to, I, I don't know how to nap. I can't mm -hmm. do it. What, this, is <laughs> re, this is reminding me, um, Cameron Allen gave a talk, maybe it was with Fresh Voices, like a year, year and a half ago, and he talked about Saturn being um, a planet of depression. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're depressed, you need deep rest. Mm. Um, and so Saturn being, getting its joy in the 12th house, yeah. uh, thinking about like the necessity of deep rest yeah. uh, for strong Saturn placements or strong 12th house placements. And that's like, also how we navigate burnout you know tw mm -hmm. the 12th house being another house where we see a lot of people who are um working to dismantle systems of oppression or who are uh heavily impacted by systems of oppression uh the way that you nav the way that people might navigate that is getting deep rest mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. especially especially um black bodies right like and I would say also like native bodies but I'm thinking um black bodies who you know American Americans who are descendants of enslaved peoples in this country and how our bodies have been our ancestors bodies and I would say you know currently too our bodies um especially when we're talking about um people who are imprisoned and um, or taken from their home or taken yes mm -hmm. and um that's obviously not only happening in in the united states it's happening worldwide but just the act of reclaiming our our sovereignty over our bodies through rest and through mm -hmm. through actively disengaging from you know this capitalist system that tells us we're nothing unless we're working um and and yeah it's just it's so incredibly important. And, you know, once I started learning about this stuff and, you know, I thought, thought about it, like my ancestors, my ancestors don't want me to be like toiling every day and like, 
<laughs> like, they did not do all that shit just for me to mm-hmm. continue to engage in um in that system of like you know unless you're working unless like I just think about again like I would be I was running for the bus every day like sprinting um one time it was the first day of Leo season um must have been 2019 and I was running for the bus to get to work and I and I say the first day of Leo season because this is the sun entering my sixth house. Um, and I fell, and I like mm-hmm. tripped and fell and like ripped my jeans and like was bleeding. Um, so I was running for the bus and um, I, it just like made me realize like why, like I'm, I'm literally like sprinting every day. Not only is it the physical thing, but then it's like the anxiety, so much anxiety mm-hmm. every day about like, getting to work on time just so they can see me sitting at my my desk working and I wasn't even fucking working like I was barely doing work (laughs) I was doing my other work honestly I was doing my astrology work at work um just so they could see me just so they can know keep tabs on the fact that I'm doing my work I didn't talk to anybody at that job I literally sat at my desk with my headphones in for eight hours a day just doing any other things I could have done in my bed right um and yeah just like actively actively removing myself from that system and of course I'm still working a lot like if anyone follows me on Twitter you know all I do is complain about (laughs) how burnt out I am all the time but at least it's I'm doing it for myself right I'm doing it for the people that I care about like this community um and not for a corporation that gives no shits about me. Um, so yeah, this idea of deep rest, um, deep rest, depressed. Wow. Yeah. That's beautiful. Um, thank you for sharing that. It's just so important. It's so important that we all engage in, in that. And then on top of that, making sure that, um, our, you know, Black people in this country are able to access that. And most of us haven't been able to, you know, like, for example, my dear, beautiful father, who is 80 years old and still working, he's still working. (laughs) He's 80 years old. He's been working his whole life. He didn't graduate high school because he had to work. Right. Um, And thank God he's going to retire at the end of this year. Um, But the fact that he you know, he's a Martian as well. He's very Martian. Um, feels like he can't stop working because he just, yeah, it's the whole thing. It's, you know, ingrained in us that we're, we're only worthy if, if we're producing something. Um, and I think being in the 12th house often means, sometimes it means, um, you know, you're subjected to rest and contemplation mm. and, and being in your head, sort of like we've seen with this pandemic, right? Like I've yeah. talked to so many people who's just been like, yep, well, I've been forced to, <laughs> to look at myself. I've been forced to sit with myself um, in ways that when we're just doing regular world, when we're in the before times, um, when you have to be, you know, going to running to work every day and like seeing all the people and there's all these other places to put your energy when that's taken away and we have to like just sit with ourselves. Um, we realize a lot of things. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We realize a lot of things. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I think and Saturn being, you know, rules, regulations, um, mm-hmm restrictions etc I think there's that plays out in in kind of systemic ways of course like under capitalism with um like border systems which are incredibly violent and um and just like like incarceration systems which are incredibly violent and and that kind of thing um and then also I think of the 12th house like on a kind of more individual level as like um how we relate to those rules and regulations or mm-hmm. how like what we think we should be doing um and that and I think that comes back to that sense of like compare and despair right which is like there are certain like rules that are supposedly what we should be doing or standards that we should be like holding ourselves to or things that 
mean achievement or mean success or whatever that means under capitalism and it's like um the i think the 12th house especially in the sixth house to some extent kind of really force us to like slow down and um and confront the like truth of those things um and often they're not true right often there's kind of like standards or um, are just like completely arbitrary in the way in the same way or they're not arbitrary they're kind of like what tie us into these systems as well they serve a purpose which is to kind of like maintain um like production or maintain um oppression basically and um and yeah i think like the act of slowing down is like really radical because um it allows us to have space um coming back to that saturnian thing as well like of space and having the space to actually like just be and um and not kind of be just like following the like cycle and following like what we're supposed to be doing i guess um and yeah that's what rest is as well to some extent, like yeah. recovery rest mm -hmm. um yeah Saturn being the slowest planet too, like um, mm. like you said, forcing us to slow down. Um, and I think a lot about like in sort of piggybacking off of what uh, Kirsten is saying, it's a place where we are able to recognize our access or lack thereof because it's limits. So what, what do we have access mm. to? Um, and uh, where we're sort of like, forced into a position where we have to um, take control or earn authority over our own existence. Um, and a big part of that is not just looking at um, where the system is designed to um, give some people access more than others, according to, of course, like race, class, um, nationality, geolocation, uh, ability, so on and so forth, but also um, where we are look like, you know, when we're talking about the 12th house, one of the ways that we can get authority over our existence is by recognizing our, our participation, where we are complicit in the system. And part of the work of um, earning the self authority is um, making that recognition and then taking actions towards a world that we want to live in. And like, it's not enough to just talk about the values of community being like antithetical to capitalism um, or the values of like honesty and integrity and like equity. You have to actually take the action, which is why I think some of the like um, acts that uh, we do when we're perpetuating Saturn on Saturn days is like, um, giving clothing uh, and or food to people of um, marginalized experiences or identities. Um, so often like people who are, you know, at least for me, like it's like the people who are living in the houseless camps at the bottom of the hill. Um, and so one of the things that I'm thinking about too is like, who's on the margins? How am I on the margins? How am I within the margins or on the other side of the margins? Um, like marginality mm -hmm. um, is uh, relative to limits. Um, they're very similar. Mm -hmm. I and so- I just wrote this down to bring up. So I'm so happy <laughs> you brought this oh, up. Awesome. <laughs> I'll turn it over to you. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. Just, you know, thinking about Saturn as, the, the limit, right? The limit of what we can see and know. Um, and also how the, the nature of the opposition is of Saturn. Um, and just kind of drawing up the imagery of, yeah, you have the limits, right? You have the boundary. And then what is pushed up against it? Um, what's on the margins? Just like what you were saying and how, yeah, the 12th house has so much to do with marginality. Um, and marginal experiences. And I think, you know, when I, when I talk to 12th house people, which is often folks who have their chart ruler in the 12th um, or, you know, their sun or their moon um, luminary in the 12th house or 12th house stellium, et cetera. Um, they are folks who are very familiar with marginality or there are folks who um, dedicate their lives to, you know, helping people on the margins. 
um, and therefore find themselves in, in spaces where they're surrounded by folks on the margins. And so what that often looks like, um, you know, folks who are on the margins or people, um, people who are, you know, we talk about prisons, right? Um, people who are institutionalized or hospitalized, um, yeah, folks who, you know, aren't, they're not really seen by society. You have to sort of like go, you have to go to the margins in order to, to even find, I mean, oftentimes, yes, they're like, it's, they're, they're in our, they're in our neighborhoods, you know, it's not like they're, they're invisible, but when we're talking about the system in society, they're often neglected by society and these systems that we, that we are in. So, um, yeah, I'm just glad you brought that up because that's something um, that I that I wanted to say about, you know, Saturn and, and margins. And I, I talk about that a lot. If anyone heard my, my keynote for um, Portland School of Astrology, a visionary astro conference, it was all about Saturn and Aquarius and the astrology community. But um, I talked a lot about, yeah, the experience of being of Aquarius, especially, but um, being pushed up against the walls of a space or perhaps perched up on top of the wall or, or even hanging out outside of it, um, mm-hmm. whether that's by choice or not. Um, all of that kind of speaks to like a Saturnian experience and a 12th house experience with that. Mm. Mm-hmm. I see a lot of, um, yeah, those people. thank you for, um, I see a lot of people um doing like abolitionist work um Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as a very like 12th house thing because Mm -hmm. it's like the recognition that these systems can't be reformed because they're built um a certain way to enact violence upon certain people marginalized people um and just kind of saying like we actually can't do that and so we want to dismantle these systems and I think a lot about the yeah the kind of like 12th house relationship of that and and to some extent like to some extent the sixth house as well I think they kind of work in tandem in that way um but the kind of um yeah the thinking I think almost like the 12th house being like the bigger overarching structures or systems and how we like relate to those and how we think about dismantling those and then I think about um the sixth house is kind of maybe being like more local kind of um day-to-day like Mm -hmm. kind of not Mm -hmm. yeah they both are really day-to-day but um yeah I don't know just like talking about that and thinking about like marginality really made me think of um think of that and the work of kind of also refusal right which is also a Saturnian thing which is what abolition kind of is um at its core which is a refusal of of these systems and and kind of a refusal to um to enable them to kind of continue which again requires a lot of like active engagement as well yeah yeah this also has me thinking about how enemies is one of the significations of the 12th house yeah hidden Um, enemies hidden enemies Mm. people that we like can't see um but also like the system being the greatest enemy mm-hmm. um uh, and like it, it's similar to what we were talking about with the sixth house is it's hard to see it because it's averse to the ascendant um and uh it's hard to see the system because you're so deeply entrenched in it uh again being entrenched um mm-hmm. or or it's hard to see the system because you're like um you know, it's the insanity of recognizing that the system doesn't work and the system doesn't do what it's supposed to do, which is to support, um, like a system mm-hmm. should be built uh, intentionally to support the people. Um, uh, but often the reality, Saturn, <laughs> of the matter is that it's um, not functional. Uh, and then also, you know, when we're, when we're thinking about um, enemies, uh, being like the things that are bigger than us or seem to have authority over us. Um, Saturn being representative of authority um, Mm -hmm. and so being subject to the authority of the system as opposed to um, 
and then like the remedy for that or the 12th house remedy for that is to leave the system to escape the system to Mm -hmm. stop doing whatever the system is propelling you to do Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with that i kind of want to um bring it bring it draw it in a little bit and talk like when you brought up um hidden enemies and uh, related to the system and thinking you know sometimes that's us sometimes yeah that's us as well. We can be our own <laughs> worst enemy in some a lot of ways. Um, and sort of wanted to bring the conversation into a space about mental health. Mm. Um, and because we certainly find that here in the 12th house, again, it's like maladies of the, the mind and the spirit. Um, and, and how, yeah, we can, when we're in this space, sometimes it can be, we can feel trapped, you know, by, by our own minds. Um, and hmm, yeah, again, I'm just thinking and like staring at the wall outside of my window, <laughs> just getting a little bit of sunlight, but um, just the fact that it can feel like a mental prison sometimes, like we're imprisoned in our own minds and um, trying to figure out like the key, the escape, right, which is another 12th mm-hmm. house signification can be it can be really difficult we can kind of be in these really um liminal spaces in our own minds where you know no one else can really no one can see what's going on in there except you um and and that's again like part of it being this this dark house i always say it's like behind the scenes and and the in between Mm -hmm. spaces um and having to really grapple with a lot of these things hopefully not totally by yourself but it is it is something that only you can really experience right someone else can't get into your mind and be like oh yeah I see what that's like in there that sucks um (laughs) but what someone else can do and I find this so I have my sex light in the 12th house yes thank um, you and I have a lot of like I have a lot of clients who come to me one of the most recent ones I feel like the the common theme is like, I'm going through this really hard thing in my life. How do I come out of it more evolved? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wait a second. Like, how about like, who told you that you needed to evolve through this really hard, oppressive situation? (laughs) Like that's so messed up. Um, And so one of the roles that I find myself taking up a lot in client sessions is like helping them see outside the box, Mm -hmm. like outside the container, outside the dark. It's like, how do I, yeah, 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 definitely. I love that interpretation too of like any of the luminaries in the dark houses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. But like being someone who's able to kind of shine a light on the system and be like, I understand that you're asking this question and I understand that you're struggling with this thing. And also this thing is not your fault. Like Mm -hmm. this thing is imposed, this thing is conditioned, this thing is systemic. Um, And that is where some of the relief is, is actually being able to then um, to like receive um, counsel from somebody who's able to see beyond what you're seeing because sometimes when you're like mm-hmm. in that mental space you're sort of trapped in it and if somebody can shine the light on the walls or maybe even the door um, then you have an opportunity to get out of it um, but I think that's I think it goes both ways you know I, I also see a lot of people with strong 12th house placements who are like very much people who need to be the ones to get themselves out um mm-hmm. as opposed to are being... you looking at me <laughs> no actually I wasn't thinking about you but okay, yeah. um but I totally could I could totally see that as well yeah <laughs> I mean having Saturn having needle Saturn in the 12th and Aquarius yeah. I could I really like mm-hmm. that's and I think I see that a lot like when planets are in dignity um they like when they're in, when they're in domicile um, or exaltation, they like want to fend for themselves um, because they're like, I got this. Yeah. 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 It's like, you wouldn't understand. (laughs) (laughs) You wouldn't get it. Um, Yeah. And thinking about how, when you're in these spaces um, where, you know, you might be having some mental health challenges it is so necessary to be able to remove yourself from everything else that's happening, going to this 12th house space to do some care work for yourself. And I think Mm. a lot of what that looks like is um, like contemplation, meditation, and like, yeah, this like that removing yourself 
um, is so important. And, you know, sometimes that might look like a retreat and it doesn't mean like a thousand, like a couple thousand dollars in Cancun (laughs) retreat. Um, it can just mean, you know, retreating to the woods for a day, you know, um, or even staycation, like staycations, you know, giving yeah. yourself, yeah, take a, carving, take, take carving out time. Yeah. 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 Carving out time, taking a social media break, you know, mm-hmm. a retreat from social media. That sounds nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I have yeah. to do that. Like, I know. Regularly. I'm like, oh, I need to schedule that one in <laughs> like for sure. Forever deleting Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I, I wish I could do it as much as you do. Um, yeah. Any other th- oh, one other thing I wanted to bring up with about the twelfth house before we start start to close out is this the psychicness of the twelfth house. This really yeah. special, um, yeah, ability of the twelfth house to well, I'll put it this way. Okay, so Saturn as the Lord of Time, right? And I think the twelfth house does have an association with time um, because of that. And I think what I found to be very true, I read this book, um, The Twelfth House by uh, Karen Haymaker Zondag. Yeah. Zondag. Karen Haymaker Zondag, I I believe. Um, And she talks about how planets in the twelfth sort of have this almost like the premonition thing going on. And I find this to be so fucking true for my twelfth house Saturn and I'm literally writing a book called Timing is Everything um, mm. because there's this thing with 12th house planets where they they know before you know. Um, and what I've learned throughout my Saturn return, I know it sounds like I'm like past it, but I did have a very... I did have a very long Saturn return in 2020. Um, My Saturn's at one Aquarius, so I got the station. I got I got a couple hits. I've already had three hits. Um, But yeah, like something um, that became very clear to me was that, well, Saturn as as my malefic of the sect is a protective, um, you know, it will will be experienced more as a protective influence and that Saturn was protecting the shit out of me in terms of timing and making sure that, Mm. you know, the timing of everything that was happening in my life or that is that does happen in my life kind of works out like mysteriously well. (laughs) Mm. Um, And I find that with folks who have 12th house planets, like those planets know before you do. Mm -hmm. um, And they'll Mm -hmm. sort of like, they'll sort of watch out for you in that way. And you can kind of think of, you know, that space in the sky, like right after sunrise and the sun's sort of like hanging out in that, um, that, yeah, that early morning sky. There's Um, something hopeful about it. Yeah. There is something hopeful about it. And there is like going back to the whole like birth metaphor um, and the remembering of the dreams and remembering of that that underworld mm. journey and how um, there's just like this very s- sensitive, vulnerable quality to planets in the 12th house where like I really do think of them as just like in this very liminal space where they're super wide open and can just like pick up on a lot of shit like mm-hmm. think about a baby newborn baby they are like sponges they can just they're taking in all the everything right yeah. everything from their environment and 12th house planets sort of have that vibe too where they're they're just sort of like soaking everything in um and can know um can know a lot and you can't see it it's you can only feel it when you're new to it you can see it's like when again when you're yeah. new to the world you're hypersensitive to it in a way that like other people are it's normalized for others but you're actually able mm-hmm. to see the thing that's mm-hmm. sort of more obvious yeah um, yeah it's more experienced you can experience more deeply but yeah there's this sense of like um I don't know, for me, it, like the Saturn return has been so much about trusting, just like having a very deep sense of trust that everything is happening right on time. Like it's just happening right on time. And I've, I've had to really just fall into that and, and trust that um, in big ways. So, yeah. I really appreciate you bringing this up because um, I was reading recently from Chris's book, um, Hellenistic Astrology, the Study of Fate and Fortune, available in fine fine stores everywhere. everywhere. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Shout out to Chris. Uh, (laughs) Um, 
but um, he's talking about the angular triads and how in certain contexts the ancients understood the declining houses um, or the declining like uh, spaces as leading the angular triads. Um, mm-hmm. uh, the angular triads being like centered around a pivot. So the angles being the pivots, the place where you're like shifting between um, I guess we could say quadrants. Um, And so the space that is declining away from the angle is actually leading everything else. Um, Mm -hmm. And he talks about that in, um, he references Olympiodorus. Um, It's in chapter 10 for anybody who's looking for that. But um, I think that when you're leading, it's like as the leader, you can kind of see the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Um, You like see where you're going. And so um, planets in some of the like the declining spaces are maybe able to lead planets that are on the angle or about to cross over the angle um, and that's where a lot of the like foundation of my research project is um, rooted in but uh, yeah I think the 12th house especially just because that's such a significant shift from um, the subterranean subterraneous world to the um, top side world. Mm-hmm. You saying that just reminded me of a dream I think I might have had last night, and I was <laughs> so weirded out by the fact that you saying that just like brought up this image in my mind of um, rowing. I used to be a rower in high school, and I I guess I just had a dream where I was, because um, <laughs> okay, you said you were talking about leading. And I was at this image came in my mind of a dream, I guess I just had about um, like getting into the boat and deciding who would be first. Like, I, I just, mm-hmm. I don't know who I was, who I was with, but I kept <laughs> being like, I'm going to be, I'm going to stroke, which is the first person in a boat. Um, this is referred to as a stroke. Um, and I was like going back and forth with someone about like who would stroke the boat, who would lead that like kind of um, sets the pace for the boat. And I was, that was my position a lot um, when I was rowing was, I was, I was the stroke. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know why, what you like, what, what the fuck was that dream about? Who knows? But I'm glad that I just had that little memory <laughs> based on what you said. Um, That's such a 12th house thing too. I know. Just, like, to be in that space of, mm. between like, dreaming and waking and then like practicing remembering your dreams mm-hmm. if you have 12 mm-hmm. if you have strong 12th house placements if you're listening to this like keeping a For dream sure. journal is totally recommended so much yeah well y'all it's about time for us to wrap this up mm-hmm. <laughs> even though I could talk to you forever this is what happens when you get a bunch of water signs together we just like <laughs> keep spilling everything out all over the place <laughs> um, we're overflowing we're overflowing yeah, yeah. Um, thank you so much for both of you for doing this and being here today mm. talk about these malefic houses in like the sweetest way possible <laughs> um, I love them yeah I love them too I do I mean Same. not gonna lie I'm looking forward to not being in a six house year but I'm I'm <laughs> I'm with it for now you know <laughs> Um, Same with the, with the 12th house. The 12th house, yeah, the 12th house here. I'm like ready <laughs> <laughs> to be done. Um, but. Yeah, angular years are ahead of ahead for all three of us. Mm. Definitely Aaron's. Aaron's come sooner. Um, mm-hmm. Let's let the people know where to find you. Um, Kirsten, how about you go first? Yeah, um, I am on, I was thinking about this, made me realize that I have different handles social media which is not great but um <laughs> most of my astrology stuff uh lives on twitter uh which is at immaterial nerd um hopefully that will be like spelled out somewhere yeah um, we'll link it we'll link it below cool uh and my instagram where not very much of my astrology stuff lives is um at kirsten underscore y z w or y z w i guess <laughs> um <laughs> and yeah that's that's more just like random day-to-day stuff and um yeah I'm in the process of reading my website which should be done by the time this airs probably I think. cool um, so that will be in my uh socials but it will also be um Kirsten uh Y Z Y Z W U so Y Z Woo 
Facebook.com, uh, which is just my name. So, yeah. I'll link it below too. Those are all the places. Cool. Erin. Mm. Um, the best place to find me is probably on my website, uh, ET, like extraterrestrial, Shipley, uh, ship like a boat, L E Y, uh, dot com. And I'm at ET Shipley on Instagram and Twitter. Um, I'm like very 12th house C about social media these days. <laughs> and by that, I mean, I disappear a lot. Um, I don't generally, uh, DM with people that I don't know. So, uh, if you want to get in contact me, with me, the best way is to email me. It's erin at etshipley.com. Um, and uh, the best way to find out about what's happening in my practice is to sign up for my newsletter, which you can do on my website. Um, and mostly lately, I talk to people in client sessions. Um, but if you're an astrologer and you want to connect, feel free to shoot me an email. I'm always happy to connect with people in the community. Um, I'm just also in Saturn return and like recognizing mm -hmm. I have Saturn in the second house. So time is a resource mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. workaholism is a thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'm practicing, I'm practicing my, like observing my limits. And uh, that's been like really rewarding in a lot of ways uh, because it means that I get to show up to relationships with a lot more integrity and presence and uh, just fostering quality connections. Yeah. Awesome. Please check out both of these amazing people's work. Um, yeah. Thank you guys. This has been great. So thank we, you. we finished the houses. So this nice. is the last of the houses series. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I don't know what's next. So tune, tune in next week to see I'm what excited. the hell I come up with. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. you're going to come up with something great. And you're never mm -hmm. one to not have ideas, Kira. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Thanks guys. Thank you so much for having us. Um, yeah, Kristen, it was such a pleasure to hear you speak. You are very yeah, eloquent. Likewise. <laughs> yeah.